the advantage naturally, let's go back to Apple. Let's see if I can, oh, you know what? I'm gonna use a, a straight covered call search here, Alessandro, because you said, should it be weekly? Should volatility be high? No. <laughs> Similar to the conversation that we just had with Mike, high volatility is gonna give you the higher return. And you say, I understood that I have to sell options with high volatility. No, you don't. The implied volatility on those options is high for a reason. Why? Because something's coming up, whether it's an earnings event, a known event with an unknown outcome, where if I'm just doing covered calls, the stock drops 25 to 33% from an unexpected poor earnings, and you only generated 1% or 2% with a weekly cover call premium. You're down 23 24 33%. How many months is going to take you to get back to break even in that situation? Do you want volatility for a good premium? Yes. Do you want to find the highest volatility on a biotech stock or something along those lines that has earnings coming up that's very speculative because it has the highest premium? No. That'll get you into trouble more often than not, and you won't see a successful trading rate. And you want to buy when volatility is low? Not necessarily. Apple calls might look attractive right now if you have a long-term speculation that Apple is going to move up. We saw the volatility on the Apple options one week out in time was only about 18, 19% for the out of the money options. Is there any guarantee that I could pay that 222 for the 230 call right now and it would go up in price and volatility would increase and I'd have a big profit? Not without some kind of impetus, not without some kind of catalyst to move that Alessandro. And if there was a catalyst coming up, the known event with an unknown outcome, the volatility wouldn't be at 18%, it'd be at 30, 35 or 40%. You probably make more profit buying calls and puts or buying straddles and strangles on stocks around earnings, even though sometimes you lose money or you pay too high into volatility than you would targeting low volatility stocks, buying calls 7, 10 to 15 days out of time, hoping there's some movement because the volatility isn't there to make any movement happen. You're talking about, do I want to buy undervalued options? Potentially, but if it's an undervalued option, the implied volatility is low. The market is not expecting it to move. The call is likely not to be profitable. Do I want to go out and buy a call on a biotech stock that's you know implied volatility of 200%? Absolutely not. I mean, if I, unless I have inside information that the stock at 16 right now, I'm buying an 18 call for $4, I'm speculating it's going to go up to 35 when it passes its phase two or phase three trial. That's not what we're talking about. That's not a good approach at all. What you want to do why do I want to use weekly calls? I'm going to, I said I'm going to use the search, okay? And we're just going to look at one stock. I'm going to clear all the filters out. I'm going to leave it at all expirations. We're going to stay with Apple, even though I mentioned it's a low volatility, so we're not getting a lot of bang for our buck. I mean, you want a good premium, Alessandro, absolutely, but there is balance. You don't want to go for the highest volatility possible because that means something's coming up in the market. All right, but we're going to look at Apple. We're going to look at all expirations. And to keep this exercise simple, I'm just going to put strikes out of the money one-to-one. -one. This is a covered call search, remember. And this is just for, oh, let me, let me change this. My apologies. I want it assigned annual. There we go. We're still going to sort by a percent of assigned annual highest to lowest. The advantage of selling the weekly options, Alessandro, is the option that is one month out in time 30 days out in time to September 27th, 35 days out in time is at $5. And seven days out is at 232 for the same strike, 227.50, right? Five, okay, let's use September 20th. I apologize. About 30 days out, the 227.50, September 20th, standard expiration is $5.50. Next week's 227 and a half call on Apple is $2.32. This is four times the amount out in time, but is it four times the cost? Is it 920? No, it's only 550. You get a better annualized return, theoretically, selling week by week, just like the option that six months out in time is not six times the cost. Okay, so it's better to go shorter term, one week or two weeks out in time to target the better annualized return. But do I want some volatility? Let's just go back to the weekly picks of the day. Do I want some volatility to sell into? Yeah, I want a good premium. I want something that looks good. But there's my implied volatility. Do I have it here? I don't. Okay, but 
I don't want something that has 200, 300% volatility where, oh, looking at all these, okay, hey, I can still do a good position, let's say on Redfin at 1108, sell the 1050 call, a 7% downside protection, almost 8%, and still make a 2.6% return if assigned. Oh, but here's this biotech that's also at $11, and their 10 strike is trading at 265, and I've got a 20% downside protection and a potential return of 30 or 13, 15%. Why wouldn't I do that? The reason why is because that option I just described is on a biotech stock that has a phase two or phase three drug trial coming up in the next four or five or six days. If they fail, the stock's going to drop to $1 per share. Your 20% downside protection did not help you. Or it could shoot up to $22, $23 if they pass the phase two or phase three trial. And you'd get assigned and make your 13%. It's a gamble. It's a flip of a coin. It's a known event with an unknown outcome. Okay. And that's not what you want. What do we want here? We want a good balance of both. You see a lot of names here that you recognize with a lot of good returns. Elf Beauty, Wayfair, Reddit. Okay, here's Cassava Sciences. Here's a biotech, but it's not as extreme as I mentioned. The downside protection is up at 9%. It's slightly deeper in the money. Um, but you want that balance. It's not just about, oh, I need to sell into the highest implied volatility or the highest volatility. No, you don't. You're going to get burnt burn more often than not. Do I want to buy into low volatility? Not necessarily because the market's telling you there's no impetus for that stock to actually move. You want a balance. There's a reasonable balance of implied volatility that you want to look for. And, and that's what our tools allow you to do. You're screening specifically for positions that aren't out of bounds, but match the target goals and the probability that you want. So yes, monthly covered calls are fine. Why would I do weekly or two weeks out instead of monthlies? Because you get theoretically the better annualized return over time. And that's what you're looking for. But it's a trade-off. You don't want to go into the massive amount of implied volatility in that case, Alessandro, because more likely than not, it's there's something out there that the market knows. There's a known event with an unknown outcome that it could cause the stock to jump 10, 12, 15%, or it could drop 20, 30, 40, 50%. That's what implied volatility is telling you. There's risk on that position. The other term that's used for implied volatility is the risk of the underlying or the fear gauge of the underlying based on expectations, uh, competition, what's been out of the news, how they've succeeded or how they failed. Okay, that's kind of what you're looking at with implied volatility. Do I want a good return? Do I want a good premium? Absolutely. Whether I'm doing credit spreads, whether I'm doing covered calls, out of the money cash secured puts, yes, I want good. Do I have to find the one with the highest premium in other words, looking at all at the money strikes for all uh, 5,600 optionable stocks, looking for the ones with the highest implied volatility, get the best return. No, especially if I'm doing covered calls, because that's telling you there's a 50-50 shot that this stock could move drastically one direction or the other. Flip of a coin, one direction, it works out well for you. The other direction, you've probably wiped out eight or 10 previous covered call trades, which had a one, one and a half, two percent return. I mean, we're talking about drops of 60, 70, 80 percent that you see in biotechs, those ones that have that implied volatility of 200, 300 percent. OK. Capped gain still taking on the risk of 96, 97 percent. It's a balance. Highest implied volatility, highest volatility does not mean the best trade buying or selling. Lowest volatility does not mean the best trade in buying. You have to have the direction. You have to have the underlying in place, if you're doing something like a covered call, Alessandro, as you mentioned, what are we talking about here? Something with a capped gain, but still with 95, 96% of risk on the stock position. I don't want something that could drop 50, 60, 70% from a phase two or phase three drug trial, even though it's offering me a 20% downside protection. That's not a recipe for success. Balance. What do I want in a covered call position, Alessandro? I want a stock with a good premium that gives me a good downside protection. If I'm looking for consistent income, maybe weekly or two weeks out with a good probability, but I also want stocks that are moving in my direction. 
I want stocks that have shown positive earnings per share growth. I would avoid unknown events or known events with an unknown outcome, such as earnings or things of that nature. I want good technicals. I want good fundamentals. I'm investing in a stock and selling a good premium to match my target returns, Alessandro. But knowing I'm still taking on 95, 96% of the risk of owning the stock. Over time, that lowers. Okay, next next week I get another two percent, and the following week another one and a half percent. You know, I'm lowering that risk, and my cost base is true. If I haven't been assigned, but again, just basic structure. One more time. Sorry. Long stock. If you just bought a stock, what are you looking for? You're looking for a stock with good fundamentals, good technicals. You might put a stop loss somewhere down here, hoping that, hey, if the stock falls 10%, I'm going to get closed out. If it falls 30%, hey, you don't get the 10% stop order. You get the 30% fill, whatever the market does. But, you know, you're probably protecting against that in earnings. The same criteria you'd look for to buy a stock long term in your portfolio or hold it long term is the exact same criteria you're going to use for a covered call a cash secured naked put. You're not following the latest thing in the news necessarily. You're not following something that, oh, it, it, it's, it's been depressed by 25%. It has to come back up. No, it doesn't. You want stocks that have shown good performance. You want stocks that have shown positive earnings. You want stocks um, that have shown, um, you know, are in the trend that you want for the strategy. Covered calls is a neutral to bullish strategy. Don't get me wrong. Whether we talk for a previous discussion, whether we're talking in the money, whether we're talking at the money, or whether we're talking out of the money, it's a neutral to bullish position. Generating 1% or 2% time value premium on a security that's dropping 20, 25, 30, 35% is declining, the covered call is only making you a small percentage per month. Right, it's not making up for this. And if you start selling calls down here, twenty-five percent below your cost basis, and now the stock snaps back up, now you got to roll that call back up to avoid getting assigned at a loss, locking in a loss. The term I mentioned earlier. And that's why I moved to long collars at that point. Um, you know, back in two thousand six or two thousand five, instead of covered calls. Now it's a personal preference, and then you know went into the married puts directly. But yeah, Alessandro, that's. That's the gamble of implied volatility. And once again, of course, um, I think there's some interesting discussions here. You might want to check out Alessandro. I can't remember what I called it. We're just going to look under implied volatility. Okay. Okay. Here's here's a good one. This one's perfect for you for your discussion. You asked me. You want to be selling when it's when it's high, and you want to be buying when it's low. Check out this video from a year ago. What does implied volatility Imply. We're going to look at stock historical volatility versus implied volatility uh, versus that. And we talk about implied volatility. Here's another one, 12 minutes long. Does imp high implied volatility mean the stock is going up? You should actually check this one out too. I really think you should check this one out. And the reason why is because I think we did a back test like we did today a little bit on the um, uh, back test there for bull put credit spread, zero data expiration bull put credit spreads on SPX. My apologies for Brick. We created a search looking at high implied volatility stocks, options with high implied volatility for buying or selling them a month out in time and those for low volatility. And all the calls we bought with low volatility, I think, lost money. 75, no, 85 to 95 percent of them lost because it didn't have the impetus to move on. That was the case. Check these two out. Go to Power Options YouTube channel. Look up implied volatility. First one, 16 minutes long. What does implied volatility imply? Second one, how does implied volatility mean the stock does this high implied volatility mean the stock's going up, Alessandro? Opposite for low volatility. The answer is no. That is not a direct relation. Do I want to sell into good volatility? Yes, but it's a balance. I don't want the highest. The highest implied volatility does not mean the best option to sell. Think of your strategy and what your strategy is. Covered calls a neutral to bullish strategy. I still want stocks that I feel are neutral to bullish. Higher implied volatility does not mean it's the best trade.